I wanted to do thing that I kind of thought to name uh, uh, Git tennis. We are probably not going to use Git for that because the commits and uh, loads will be uh, taking uh, too much time. Uh, but the basics are derived from something which is called uh, layer tennis. Does anybody know what is layer tennis? No idea. Somebody has idea? This is coming from the land of the Photoshop. And uh, I think uh, it's probably uh, from there and other places. This is basically that uh, two designers are uh, uh, taking first the uh, Photoshop file of something. One designer adds some kind of uh, uh, filters and tunes the file, hands it back, I think, in uh, 60 seconds or something like that. And uh, the other designer is going to add uh, something, and it's going to ping pong like, uh, or like tennis. Everybody's watching like uh, that was being added and done. So to prove the skills or demonstrate something. Uh, what I had in mind, it, it's, it was actually related to a site that I was uh, putting live a couple of uh, days ago. I can actually also show the site. Uh, it's this one about uh, different uh, security related questions. I'm just checking out sort of the audio, audio level. Okay, so seems to be fine. Uh, and uh, I got access to the site on the night when it was going live. And I was asked that, oh, Peter, now there is plenty of time until midnight when it's going live. Could you uh, make sure that you have also checked that everything is secure? I was like, oh my god all of that and uh, what should I do? So I uh, made a file that I named kill all. So I uh, started making a small, it's basically a functions PHP file, uh, but uh, uh, when you noticed where did I get it, I had placed it inside uh, uh, WP content in something which is called uh, MU plugins, which is MU is for uh, must use. Must use, yeah, exactly. Yeah, not 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 mustache, but must use. And uh, but but you can also just try to remember it in a way. It's mustache plugins. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very very important plugins. Uh, and uh, uh, must use plugins have uh, saved my. Hinder cartons uh, for multiple times. Um, for example, when we were uh, doing the uh, Estonian Blue team a couple of years ago on Lock Shields uh, cyber exercise, uh, we had everything set up with Ansible, and so everything had to be will be deployed very nicely, and everything will be secured. And I said, but but what's our plan B? No, 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 Ansible will be running. There is 30 minutes at the beginning of the exercise, nobody will be at at attacking us. And Ansible will have updated everything. I said, but plan B, there is no plan B. Of course, so I made a must-use plugin that uh, uh, did uh, disable the plugins I knew were not secure, and did uh, some other things like add auditing, and then the exercise began, everybody started doing the updates and reconfiguring the networks and our network admins completely uh, killed the network. So for 25 minutes of the 30 minute disgrace period, we didn't have any network access to our own network. So what I did, I dropped in the MU plugin with uh, some kind of, let's say, kill all functions, and I was safe at the moment the red team came on uh, attacking us. So, this is the place why it's good, and it's uh, good for, it's maybe not the best place to put uh, all of your things, but uh, to do something. So, fir first ones, I'm uh, starting with things that uh, uh, you exactly described, like uh, filters, and uh, with uh, some very, s very special functions. I'm adding return true, or positive uh, return, to auto-update plugin and auto-update theme. Brave man. I am. I am. Uh, uh, because uh, by, by default, WordPress will be updating itself, or I don't know, herself, or himself, or whatever. Uh, 
and <laughs> and uh, uh, but but not touch the plugins. Do not touch the plugins. Uh, but this will mean that the plugins will be also updated, so uh, if you want to keep something secure, then uh, I'm actually say thinking that if it is uh, slightly broken, then uh, it's uh, safe because it just won't work and uh, yes, can't be hacked. Better than hacked, yeah. Better than hacked, because you, c you just need to uh, fix it. Absolutely, absolutely. And when the site is broken, there is always a possibility for a client to call you and ask you to repair that, which is a new business. So <laughs> we are teaching here people to make better business with WordPress, so this is an absolutely good thing to break it occasionally and show that you are doing something. I'm updating and I'm protecting you actively. There are some kind of shortcomings, but anyway. Uh, then there is the second one, a commentary which is kind of probably maybe understood in Estonian. I think there was some kind of politician who was telling that. A commentary. <laughs> uh, to make the comments closed by default. Why is that important? Because I think most of the sites don't have comments. Yeah. If you have a That's blog. That's true. But most of the corporate sites don't have comments because uh, you wouldn't be corporate if you would be interested in feedback. <laughs> The feedback is coming from probably from the <laughs> sales anyway. You will be knowing if you are doing right. So why, why have comments? And uh, uh, this is one way of uh, uh, filling your database with uh, Viagra and Cialis and so on uh, spam. And we also, also personally identifiable information as well. Which is also a problem for a company at the, at the point. Yes, there, there could be uh, tons of things. Uh, for us, from the hosting provider side, it may only, may mostly is related to huge database sizes. So we have actually had real cases where we have had told people that, okay, your database over, is over 12 gigabytes, so we're going to charge you, and they have uh, ch uh, went to different hosting provider because we were so bad. And the, the 12 gigabytes were of the commentaries, comments, comments spam, so okay, whatever. Uh, another one is pings. Do you know what is ping? Has anybody watched the, which of the Monty Pythons it was, the machine that makes ping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically that's a link back when somebody m links to your site somewhere in another blog. Yeah, like an automatical comment. Yeah. You could, like one website comments on another website. But it acts like a comment, again, a way to insert uh, spammy comments with yeah, the links. Spammy backlinks, yeah. And also, I think, uh, to protect people from just in, uh, inserting spammy comments into your website, there is, uh, in, in case of the ping, your website is going to check if the other site has uh, uh, something to say about you. So it's, it, it has been, at some occasion, uh, occasions, I think, also used as a denial of service multiplier. Yeah. So also. Very good thing to take it off. Oh, why? Where, where does the second quote, uh, the third uh, comment quote come from? XML's dead, baby. XML's dead. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it, it was in Pulp Fiction. Yep. Z's dead, baby. Z's dead. Uh, XML, RPC, is a WordPress API which was created. Before REST API, basically. Be be before REST API, but I think, I don't know, before I started using WordPress or something like that. Uh, in the versions of one point something already, meaning that uh, from external it's possible to uh, do something with your website, including if you have uh, admin credentials, post and edit, com edit and also list authors and, and so on. Uh, it has been used for different kinds of, again, uh, denial of service uh, attacks and, uh, and also enumerating users. So if you are thinking how they are knowing uh, when they are doing the brute force uh, into your VP login, uh, then uh, there are various ways of 
of doing that. Uh, one of them is also using the XML RPC uh, API connection to to uh, to enumerate that, and, and I think they are also tr doing basically login tests over that. Yeah, so yeah, if, so you, you if you just uh, uh, block access to your VP login.php, meaning that oh, here, now yeah. nobody can try to brute force my very simple password, then they can still use the XML RPC interface and uh, doing the calls to that. Uh, then. I'm having some things that, uh, okay, now that we have disabled some things, when you're looking at the head of, the, of a random WordPress, uh, I can't look here because this one already has been cleaned up. Can we think about a random WordPress that is, doesn't have these things? Uh, I think this one, oops. Something like that. So now that I'm looking at the WordPress is uh, the page source created by WordPress, I'm going to see that there is a way to ping back using this same XML RPC. Uh, we have disabled it, so there is no re need to manifest that. Uh, there are pointing to some kind of uh, comments RSS fields uh, feeds. Uh, we have disabled comments, so we could uh, remove that, so nobody's uh, trying to find uh, comments from the, our side. Uh, so there is uh, some kind of uh, long piece of uh, code for something. Emojis. Emojis. Do you need emojis? Yes. Not unless you're in Japan. Yes. Uh, I understand the opinions. We, we have reached the point where we don't completely agree. Some people think that emojis are very much needed. I'm usually killing them. I'm also uh, going to great length to uh, make my smileys not turn into emoticons. So I'm using usually a colon, dot, and uh, bracket, which doesn't, uh, which looks like I'm looking a bit on the side, but doesn't get in turned into stupid. Uh, smileys. Uh, so here are the next things where I'm uh, removing uh, most of these uh, things. Then slightly out of the order, rest in pieces. Uh, related to WordPress's REST API. So there is the XML, XML RPC API, API, which is using the XML uh, uh, RPC.php endpoint. And uh, and taking XML commands, and this one is the rest one, which is taking JSON payloads to do something with uh, WordPress. There was a very nice uh, core vulnerability with that, I think, in 2017, where there was a possibility via REST API. Oh, to publish pu or pu update update articles, yeah. Update, so update. 4.2, version 4.2, yeah. Yeah, something, something like that. Uh, so, uh, unless you are actually using the REST API for something, it could be disabled. In this uh, version of code, I'm uh, making sure the user has been logged in uh, to the WordPress, and I'm not sure if there is a question about, okay, there is just uh, the question that it ha uh, the user has to be logged in, so, just random users can't uh, access that. They need to have an account on your WordPress. Do you always also go and turn off uh, the possibility to register new users on WordPress? Yep. This is something you, sh this is also something which probably could be put, put here to make sure that there is no yep. way to uh, register uh, new users. Uh, why? because there is one very common uh, WordPress uh, vulnerability in plugins, which is related to checking that, uh, I, I think there was the, the function ease underscore admin, mm -hmm. or something like that, which people are thinking that, oh, this is a function for checking if the guy is admin, has logged in as admin <laughs> user. But no, it's just uh, the, the uh, function that returns true whenever somebody is trying to access admin-only areas. Yep. So you're basically telling that, huh, oh, this guy is trying to use, uh, break into my admin. Okay, must be admin, let's go. <laughs> yeah. there, is, there are tons of plugins with this one. 
So if you just disable any kind of login for uh, non, -auth no, non uh, for a user that you haven't created yourself, you're making it uh, uh, much uh, better. Uh, and okay, there is also we didn't have any emotions. No, we don't have emoticons. So, are there any things you are usually adding in these cases which uh, I'm missing from here? Mm, I'm trying to think now. So, as I said, in functions PHP, I always wrap a function uh, in an if function exists, so it can be replaced in a child theme. So, okay. that, that is something. It, it's not uh, important when you are doing an MU plugin, mm -hmm. but when you are working in functions PHP, it's, you should never like really hardly define a function because people might want to overwrite it in the child theme. Yes, and and also actually, uh, this kill all did work for my quick fix, but uh, uh, you are correct. I'm adding here functions like head cleanup. Yeah, which is Prefixing. very, very yeah. uh, common way of naming a function that could be doing that, and it could be in a plugin or in a theme or or wherever. wherever. So, so actually, the correct way of doing that is doing it uh, something like that. So, I'm adding here Kurt, like Petskret, uh, 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 or maybe I, my ne my name or my company name or some kind of. Uh, Unique uh, prefix. Yes, it's like pseudo namespacing. So whenever a function is in a in a global namespace, if it's a plugin or a theme, you should always prefix it with some kind of your your unique string. It it just it, it doesn't completely eliminate the possibility that somebody else does the same thing, but it reduces that very very much. Mm -hmm. I I just want to see if I can uh, find also an example from. Uh, uh, from one of my own sub themes. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually got bitten by that quite hard a few years ago. I had a public plugin that was being used by like, like five hundred people, uh, and it had a function it called get avatar. Uh, back when WordPress didn't have that one, and then WordPress updated and they had one, so all the sites got fatal errors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, unfo un unfortunately, I currently don't uh, find quickly an example uh, of that which you told. But yes, it, it is basically that uh, uh, you need to put uh, in a place like here, like if uh, not uh, function uh, uh, exists. Yeah. Uh, and now the name of this one. Yeah. So that that was what I was talking about. Yeah. Exactly like yeah. that. So, okay, I'm missing something here. So basically then uh, define the function uh, here. So this is a safe way of uh, doing things. And exactly as you told that in the, uh, you can define in your, in your child, child theme. Thing, the new yes. If somebody else defines the uh, head cleanup before, then it will be very nicely used. Not important in this case of this, uh, uh, filters plugin. or hooks, but yeah. uh, in all of other cases. Yeah, uh, another thing that they also like to do in, in this setup, you have a lot of like remove action, remove filter in the global namespace, just directly mm -hmm. in the code. I usually r like to wrap them up and call it the earliest hook available, but not in the global namespace. So I usually, uh, for a theme, I have before after theme set up, I think the, the hook is called, and for plugins, I use plugins loaded. Mm -hmm. And I put all the other hooks in that, so it's just mm -hmm. a bit more clean. And again, if you mm -hmm. wanna, if you wanna change those things, especially so, in the yes, theme, but perhaps something like yeah, uh, here something the like emojis. this. So uh, there is a place where to invoke that. Yeah, the init, and you're told that uh, the plugin's ready or or whatever. Yeah. Whatever so this is. this one actually in it, it sounds like it should be an early hook, but it really isn't. Mm -hmm. So if you want early hooks, so there is. Plugins, uh, plugins loaded for plugins uh, after theme setup or after th setup theme. I always forget which one, but this one's for themes. That's the earliest one available. And if you're using an MU plugin, there is an MU plugins loaded. So those three, I if you hook something there, nobody can get to it faster. Mm -hmm. So it's the earliest places to put them. Yeah. So uh, th this this kind of uh, build up is also 
something which is very uh, advisable in uh, doing. Uh, uh, of my own uh, functions that are usually in uh, these places, let's see. Uh, again, let's make it a bit, uh, oops, sorry, I was in the wrong place. Uh, okay, this is a file which uh, starts with if defined apps, path, not defined apps path exit, which makes sure that none of the code gets executed if, directly, it, uh, yep. if it is called directly. In these files, should be anyway only some kind of function called, so it shouldn't be doing anything bad when called directly, but uh, this way it's even uh, safer. So, uh, uh, something I'm doing is uh, usually is uh, sanitize title. Again, something you can get a plugin to do that. But uh, what it does, it doesn't actually sanitize the title, but it sanitizes the, the slog, the yeah. nice. Yeah, that's that. The problem is in in WordPress, the function that does that is called sanitize title. Yeah, and, that, and that's it's sanitize slug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the title in this case is slug. So yeah, so this yeah. removes all the like non-unicode characters. Like yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, it, it actually is especially for uh, translate for uh, uh, Cyrillic characters. Okay. Because otherwise your URL will be cons if your URL has uh, either umlauts or also, let's say Estonian or Lithuanian language specific characters, they will turn into nasty looking... Uh, yeah, try, uh, try Korean for that. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. They will be the hex codes on the URL. So if you're wanting to sh uh, share something like a very nice, uh, I don't know, link on uh, s somewhere that people can click, it will be coming something like with uh, very weird, weird characters and yeah. untypable manually. Actually, and sometimes it's even nastier than that, because in some types of setups, you can get an actual unload in the link, mm -hmm. and then the user clicks that kind of link, web server does not understand it, and you get a 404. Yes, so there are kind of things. So uh, this is something that I've been do doing always for, for, for years, is that if somebody makes a Russian language post, the URL is always transliterated into into Latin alphabet. And I, as much as I found, it doesn't uh, have any bad influences on SEO, no. because I think Google is actually pretty happy with transliteration, as much as I've known. Maybe somebody has different opinions than. Uh, About uh, that one, I also have one more place where I use something very similar, is for upload names. Yeah. Because when users upload, you just yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. Yeah. Because u users are really, really notoriously hard to train to name the files correctly. <laughs> yeah, I, I have also tried, and users are completely useless. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, yes, so what it uh, does, it I think uh, it actually do, does uh, two function calls. There is one which is uh, just removing uh, uh, sanitized title, which is doing the re removing the uh, all kinds of uh, umlauts, I think. Uh, uh, I, I've written it so uh, so long time ago, so actually I'm, I'm kind of looking at, okay, what I'm doing here. Uh, but I, I think the code might be coming partly from some kind of WordPress's core fun function and yeah, mixed together with uh, yeah. the translate. So especially for files, it makes sure there are no Cyrillic, Cyrillic characters and no uh, umlauts in the file names, and perhaps there are some other things also, like uh, it's removing minuses from end and uh, and doing probably some kind of other replacements to make the file names very easily running. Because also, if there is a space in the file name, it be becomes uh, the charter code 20 or plus sign, and that can also mess up some uh, uh, some things. Yeah, if you if you make file names uh, very conforming to very simple standards, you are making everybody's life early, uh, easier. Because also in the Linux on the file system level, there are 
some somehow different encodings and sometimes when you pack something on one se server or especially with FTP you want to transfer I know there are usually one surprise that comes to junior developers when uploading to some staging or live Linux server is that the file system is case sensitive. Oh, uh, oh yeah oh and, and this is actually even worse sometimes with Git because if you just do a rename from capital to non-capital and don't do any change in it Git doesn't see that and it doesn't get committed to it. And so I've, I've been bitten by this quite recently. Me also. Yeah, because a plugin, devel recently, plugin yeah. developer did that, just renamed from capital to non-capital, and then I like, committed that change to my, to my environment and then deployed everything, and the file was missing mm -hmm. because it was still lowercase there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one, this one I also do uh, about version, versions mm -hmm. in, in uh, when loading assets. Uh, adding a version version string to it, it he helps a lot with caching errors where you load a page with new HTML but old CSS. Mm -hmm. And it's also related to, a bit to the question that I think by default WordPress will be adding the WordPress's version yeah. to the uh, end of uh, something like your plugins uh, uh, code. Yes, it and uh, it means that if you change your plugin. The, the, the handle uh, the version the, number yeah, stays the, the same. Yeah. Number doesn't change, and it, uh, it usually the JSS and CSS files are cached in the browser, browser yeah. level. So browser basically doesn't understand that something has changed. So what are you doing then? Your client is calling and uh, telling that everything is looking ugly. What are you telling the customer? Command refresh. Command refresh. <laughs> And, 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 and if, yeah, if it, it's it really works. aggressive caching, no. caching, then it doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah. like VP Engine, no, they no. cache forever. Yeah, and and uh, the uh, next thing then is probably that uh, uh, your customer will be asking, but what I'm going to do with all of, all of my customers? I'm going to call them and tell that before you're looking at my web page, do not forget to do <laughs> yeah. the command refresh. Do a hard Come refresh. On. Okay, yeah. this is the. So this is adding uh, something at the end, uh, and this, it, it is adding my themes version. Uh, so every time I, at the beginning of theme, like you showed, that in the, in yeah. also in the child theme, there is the version field. If you change that, everything will be changing together with yeah, that. But for this, if you're building your own theme, mm -hmm. then you can do that when actually yeah. declaring that, the asset. So when you're registering a script or yeah. a style, you can set that version here and you don't need this. But, but if you're you using a theme off the shelf or something and they don't do that, mm -hmm. then you can use this to fix that. Yeah, and I have to... Act Yeah, so that's good for development, not so good for, for production, because then you always uh, load the non-cached version. No, but, but if it's a file modified time of, of oh, the file modification. particular oh, file, yeah, yeah, yeah you can but, uh, do but that. This, but this one is more related to uh, how you version your own stuff. So yeah. this, this relies on you updating your plugin or theme version uh, when, when needed. Yeah, so so that that is that is something that uh, shouldn't be you if even if you're developing, and that's something that I'm not particularly good at myself, but but I try to because well, uh, if you're doing it correctly, you should also have a change log. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 Well, this this one, yeah, I, I'm good with that one. So, but. But mm -hmm. with uh, with change logs and stuff, yeah, yeah. I, a lot I, of things to learn still. I, I think I actually have currently a newer version of uh, that where I'm I'm also I think taking into account some other uh, things where I'm able to detect other things changing except my own uh, version. So I need to change the example uh, here. So uh, what else? Mm. Oh, okay, this is a function which maybe is a bit uh, 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 not fitting into the common uh, theme of ki kill alls. This is uh, defining a function is child of, which is uh, uh, giving very easy answers to the question. If you're having post uh, pages, because pa pages are hierarchical, you can very easily query if it's a uh, child of something, and there is also extension for. Uh, 
uh, ICL, which is uh, WordPress multilingual VPML plugins uh, uh, version of that. Uh, and then let's see. I actually has, does anybody else want to add that? Are there some kind of common things uh, we have been missing that you always think you must uh, include? Or you have never done these things? <laughs> this is a must, must, must have. It's the common functions, and we haven't looked at the random, which is random just mostly in the meaning that, oh, OK, I need to add PHP here, so it will be nicely showing. Here's a uh, bunch of things that, again, I just uh, copied together from various other uh, uh, function sizes, uh, for function files, like uh, setting uh, thumbnail sizes and uh, some kind of image sizes. These probably go much better into the themes. Uh, then there is something uh, I'm usually adding because I do not like plugins adding uh, their own CSS, if possible, and if uh, not needed, because I will be probably theming these things myself anyway. So ICL, I've been for a long time using uh, VPML, uh, WPML. Uh, I've been telling that uh, do not add pointless CSS files. So apparently I'm able to get rid uh, of uh, three files. And when we want to keep each uh, page load at minimal, minimal number of uh, files loaded, like, I don't know, maybe under 50 or something like that, then of 50, three is already 5% or something like that. Something. So uh, more. Okay. Uh, so not good. Uh, huh. There is one more thing. Uh, uh, VPML is also trying to add into the head that, oh, this site was made by WordPress Multilingual and the version or number of that, uh, which is uh, especially uh, bad in case they might have some vulnerabilities. Yeah, which they do a lot of times. Yes, and uh, especially WPML is a plugin which, uh, due to be being very popular, and paid plugin is often not updated. That's also true. Yeah, so when you are, when you are cleaning up websites, then the places to look for malicious code are WordPress standard themes, 2016, 17, and so on, because you have probably added your very fancy um, custom yeah. theme and then the child theme, and you are dealing there. But there are something like four different themes in the directory which uh, are never updated, never touched, and which are easy place for hiding the malware, and so is uh, uh, WordPress multilingual plugin because often it's uh, added by uh, developers without adding license, so it doesn't update. Uh, then are some uh, other things which again are uh, I'm usually using in the functions uh, file of a theme. So in case there are some themes which do have, or using a framework which has a lot of uh, 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 what these are, which, 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 which areas, I'm usually easily removing everything I don't uh, actually need. Then, uh, uh, okay, again, some things which I'm usually doing in the uh, uh, theme site is uh, adding editor styles, which is actually very good because uh, you can add a style sheet which will be uh, used when you are uh, when you are in the WordPress editor. So you are seeing headlines with the correct font and color and size and so on. Makes it so much easier. Uh, then some things which I'm doing here, again, demonstrating the use of hooks. And here they have correctly my, my usual prefix, prefix there, is that I'm adding to body, cla body class. So when there is the body tag in the HTML, it has a class. And with this function, I can, can add into its classes array whatever uh, 
uh, tags. Language tag, for example, I can target and tell if the language is uh, language minus ru, then use a different font because maybe my main font I don't know, doesn't behave very well with uh, other language because the designer, when he or she the chose the font, didn't check that this is a suitably multilingual font containing uh, Cyrillic and uh, maybe also some uh, Latvian and Lithuanian uh, characters, which I've seen missing in several cases. Estonian has, I think, this Shanje, uh, also the same problems. Oh, it's pretty common. The Z Karon is uh, something which is uh, uh, way less car uh, common. But, uh, but uh, 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 I think. <laughs> yes, uh, if you are trying to working for a big agency, you must always, of course, uh, think uh, about the economy and uh, save money on buying uh, uh, custom fonts and uh, find free versions of custom fonts, which somebody has just uh, no, printed out on laser printer, scanned in and uh, drawn uh, uh, by hand. And uh, they usually don't have uh, umlauts in the countries where people are doing such kind of uh, manual labor for them. Uh, then there are some things which are again kind of more into the theme, but again, if I'm just if it's the only thing I'm wanting to modify in the theme, I'm willing to put a custom plugin or something like yeah. that into the site to change the excerpt or how the excerpt is uh, generated. Uh, excerpt is this uh, lead of your yeah. post or or page. And uh, there are cases where it uh, uh, should be changed. I have here a comment, so actually this code I won't be probably sharing with you needs fixed to use mb underscore versions of the uh, functions. Uh, there is one, one thing, if I ever happen to be uh, dealing with strings in uh, uh, PHP. Yeah, I can break in the middle of, of a character. Yes. <laughs> Namely, the one character in a file is one byte and it can have 256 uh, different values. So, this is why the uh, U and Sha and, uh, and a lot of other special characters are uh, problematic because they need two characters or more, two or more characters uh, in the file, and this is something which is called UTF 8, which most of the web pages are served, served as. And now the PHP functions, when you are telling that, okay, to make the excerpt, let's take, I don't know, first 100 characters yeah. of the post. And this can mean that... Uh, the last uh, one is in the middle of... Yeah, in, in the middle of uh, basically, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, Ulaps. Uh, get, get the word artifact at the end, basically. Yeah, that doesn't look correctly. Uh, about this one, there is uh, one thing in WordPress that uh, regarding to emojis, if, if you use them. Uh, and the hard thing is that it's just some emojis. Because of the, in the old way, in the old days, uh, WordPress used to use um, a simple UTF-8 for its database encoding, and not MB. Uh, and what that means that if you installed the WordPress an old, a long time ago, it still has that old encoding for its post stable. And then people try to save uh, an emoji, and that the one that is much higher in the list and has a bigger bigger encoding number, uh, and has, I think, three, three bytes in it, uh, then WordPress fails to save that. And it fails to do silently. So basically the page just reloads, with the old version of the text, and no error anywhere. So it's very, very hard to debug. So if there is a problem, people saying things don't save, and they're using emojis, that's what you should look for, for bad encoding in the database. I, I see if I, if I can uh, uh, show that from a site. So, ah, oh, okay, I think this is a uh, uh, pretty cool example. I, again, I'll be making it a bit uh, larger. So this is a, basically, we could say, a completely random WordPress, but, per, but of course it's not completely random because I somehow have access to that. <laughs> so, mm, I'm not having access to all of your websites, just to make sure you understand. So uh, here is uh, on the very 
left side, the yeah. uh, collation. Collation, yeah. So it's, it's encoding plus uh, sorting rules. Yeah, yeah. So, and here it tells UTF-8, the MBV4, Unicode, CI, if so I again... case insensitive? Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah. For sorting it's probably yeah. good to have case insensitive. And uh, here are UTF-8 uh, generals. Yes. If you ever want to change the encoding of your databases, then you can probably do that using the... Uh, mm, uh, uh, PHP MyAdmin. Yeah. If you ask nicely, then I can yeah, show but so, you. So you have like UTF not MB, so that's when the emojis fail. Mm hmm. So here's actually, I think, uh, a. Uh, come on, where did it open now? Not here. Ah. Okay, let's see if I can. Oh, it, it has zoom. Okay, so this is uh, uh, my some uh, small uh, hack file called just uh, dbalter.php. When you drop that into the root folder of your WordPress and access it uh, externally, please be sure to later delete that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, then it will use the WordPress's config file to get the the database definitions, if, it's, if these are missing, you can add them also manually. And uh, it will connect to the database. And uh, for each of the tables, do, or I need to stand to uh, do, it is turning. Oh, it's from yeah. old time. It's, yeah, it's, so you it's, should it's, add MB to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I need to update that because uh, it is from the time when uh, the database is tended to. No, it, it was from the time when the default tables were Latin 1. So basically this is most likely you're changing the engine to uh, RNODB. It's for engine, and, but also uh, collation, but it's from the time when the default was Latin 1. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, I'm, I'm a very old person. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something yeah, so for... It, it should have, um, yeah, and before now. Yeah, yeah, so they, uh, pr the problems have changed by the years. Uh, so... Uh, Okay, there is excerpt, and here's one thing also I have been doing, again, this is now a uh, theme-related uh, function I'm often uh, reusing, is related to adding different uh, favicons. So you, su you usually have the uh, single favicon for 16 by 16 pixels, which is uh, used in the browsers, but you can add in the head, also uh, other uh, sizes, and here we have these all of these Apple common uh, favicon sizes. Just just in a way that you make a folder with these, and uh, and it adds again the function. Actually, now thinking back on the younger myself, it probably would need to go and check if the files exist, and then then add them uh, into head, so. Yeah, I might be wrong because I haven't touched the theme in a long time now, but I think there is now a site icon function that you can enable as an add theme support site icon that kind of does the same oh, thing. Okay, possible. Yeah. I need to, need to, yeah, yeah check it that. It basically allows that. you to upload uh, an icon from VP admin and, and generates all kinds of things, but I'm not sure if it generates ah, all of those. Okay. Uh-huh, oh, so you uh, upload one icon and it creates also yeah. the... Yeah, oh, just open things. a PMG and then, then it adds it as the, all different sizes. Ah, okay. So, yeah, well, I, I must. Uh, even I learned something from the VP meetup, which is very yeah. cool. So, so uh, I think I have run out of functions to add. Is there anything else we might be missing from things we would like to do to initialize the WordPress into our. Yeah, one thing that I kind of like to do nowadays is uh, moving VP config file out of WordPress directory, one level up, mm -hmm. and most most often out of version control. So it doesn't have like database passwords and stuff in it, because that's more environment set up. Mm -hmm. and we, so might, because, we, because we should all care about the environment now, yeah. because it's, the planet is dying, and just put the, your VP config file in the right place, do not use plastic straws, and everything will get filled. 
Yeah, but be because there is also that uh, a lot of times you forget to disable access to your .git folder on production, and then yeah, a lot of things can be seen there. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, exactly like we are usually having the VP config here, but we could have the VP config also level up. So basically, the site talsinki.eu should. Uh, remain working if I'm putting the VP config here. Yeah, because WordPress first checks one level up and only then fall back to, to the one in WordPress directory. Th this is also one thing where you can uh, very easily kill your local development. I've done it multiple times that I have just accidentally in FTP program public clicked uh, on the VP config on the server. It has copied it to somewhere on my hard disk and okay. WordPress has found that and decided to use the light <laughs> that, that was credentials. And I'm, I'm, I'm not just understanding how it's possible it just not isn't working. It was working, was working, and now it isn't working. It's telling database connection fault. And spent hours by just not knowing these things. There is, by the way, I think one more thing you can do here is, uh, uh, let's see if we're going to the Talsinki. I'm sorry, uh, talsinki.eu, okay, it works, whatever, ah, ha, ah, this is the site I used for some blog post promoted to promoting today's event, so here is my demonstration of using uh, uh, filters for something, so like uh, uh, on each page load, it's doing the oh, different random, capitalization. Random, random capitalization of uh, your post content. This is adding a filter for uh, post, uh, post content. And uh, I, we can do one thing. We can here, one level up from the WordPress, add a file uh, called HD access. Uh, and uh, how it is in uh, Apache 2.4 uh, required in I all, I think. So, and was it case sensitive or not? Let's see. Pa so, actually, I did put one file outside of the WordPress's folder, and it has an uh, impact on the WordPress uh, itself. So, uh, why it's important? It's important if you are working, for example, with some kind of staging sites and uh, you are maybe removing the WordPress and putting it back and doing all kinds of changes. Uh, and uh, uh, there have been cases in my own life where I have forgotten to put the blocking uh, HD access rules to the development site, so people have been able to see that. I think even, uh, it, it I think hasn't happened to me, but uh, there are cases where uh, search engines have also indexed the uh, development sites, which probably isn't very good. And I think uh, it was once related to, uh, I think whoever was uh, creating, I, I think it was uh, Fractal was creating Starman's uh, uh, website designs when a competi competing company found uh, out and kept uh, checking the development version of the new, uh, I think it was self-service interface yeah. or, or maybe it was marketing web or something like that. So make sure the files that need to be protected are protected uh, and I found that keeping the protecting files outside of uh, your web's uh, document route uh, uh, might be a good solution for that. Yeah, there is also one thing to know that this illustrates that some you are used to the certain way that WordPress keeps its files, like where VP config is, where VP content is, and the thing is uh, they might be different in some setups because you can use some VP config uh, uh, constants and things. So, for example, to say that the VP content site is somewhere else or plugins uh, directory is somewhere else. And if you start hard coding those things sometimes, because we are often do, because we're lazy, 
and then that we're human. The, it's yeah, way yeah. Better and in in if you do something that's been that is running in different environments, you often get things that it's not working because you assume that it will be in a certain place. Like for example, for this, if you try to have a plugin that modifies the VP config somehow, because some plugins do, then you might be not modifying the one you are thinking you are. Yeah, so you have to check that it's really the one that you want. Mm -hmm. And really the one which is being uh, used.